Hi, I'm Billy Brown, Board Certified Behavior Analyst. Today we're going to be talking about conditioned motivating operations. This is an area that can be a little tricky and, and easy to mix up. We're going to talk about definitions and some real life examples of them. So the first out of the three that we're going to talk about is a surrogate. Now, in, in very simplistic terms, what this means is that uh, some sort of stimulus has been paired and it, or accompanied another motivating operation enough times that the individual is associating those two things together, meaning that the value of that new novel stimuli has gained the same motivating properties of whatever that original motivating operation was. And that could be like a little bit confusing, so let's let's break that down a little bit. So if you're if you're familiar with a conditioned stimuli, that's kind of what we're doing here, but with a motivating operation where let's say I am trying to stop buying coffee every day and I love I love me some Dunkin Donuts coffee but I want to start making it at home now I prefer the taste of Dunkin over what I make at home if I use something like a Dunkin Donuts cup where it's something I'm used to I, I see that logo on the cup and I know this next sip is going to be really good so I'm, I'm more motivated to drink out of my Dunkin Donuts coffee cup because I know I'm going to get that the energy later on if I start filling the Dunkin Donuts cup of coffee with my coffee, the at-home coffee will start getting paired with that Dunkin' Donuts cup. Now, using that relationship between the two, I can get myself to drink from that cup more frequently because I already have a strong learning history with the Dunkin' Donuts cup motivating me to drink coffee more frequently. Now, if you want to take that a step further and you're looking to maybe make some healthier choices, a good way to do this is to try to um, maybe use water instead and maybe get you to reach for it. Now, maybe you'd, you'd, you'd see that through pretty quickly, but the idea here is that we paired the novel stimuli of my coffee at home with the already strengthened motivating operation of the coffee cup motivates me to take more sips of coffee. So by doing that, ideally, we'd end up at a point where the at-home coffee could then be shifted to be its own motivating operation. Next up is reflexive, and reflexive is one of my favorites because this one, like, like most of these, can go either way, but reflexive refers to when, the, uh, when this stimuli is introduced to the environment, it signals that things are about to get a lot better or a lot worse. And I like to use this one to think about, like, we all have that one friend that when we hear that they're gonna be at the barbecue that weekend or, or they're, going to, they're going to the party or whatever, we know it's gonna be a great time. Maybe it's that super funny friend or whatever. But as soon as we see that person's name pop up in the group chat or, or, or whatever the case may be, you immediately are more motivated to go and do that thing. That, that, the presence of them makes you more motivated to engage in whatever behavior is being associated with, with that person. Okay, and the last one is transitive. Transitive CMO is in reference to the reinforcing value of something increasing because there's something else. It provides you access to the thing that you truly want. So the way I like to think of a, a transitive condition motivating operation is like this. So we know that the, the CMOT is only valuable if it is the, 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 the thing that lets us get to the final product. So I think of it like if I had to get in my car to drive something, I really want to go see this new movie that just came out. If my car is out of gas, the gas station is now a CMOT because it becomes more valuable. I have to go to this gas station in order to get what I want. On an average day, if my, if my tank was full, I wouldn't be motivated to go to the gas station. There's, there's, there's no need for me to go there. Now, a fun way to think about this in the opposite direction, where, where the value of the gas station decreases, is when you're on your way home from work, and you see that, that that empty tank light comes on, the fill up now, notification pops up, and you realize that the nearest gas station is between you and your house, but you're more motivated to go home than you are to fill up that tank, making that tomorrow use problem. Well, that's a, CMO, a CMOT as well, because what happens there is the motivation to go to the gas station is decreased because you're more motivated, you see more reinforcing value of stopping home. And that actually leads into a whole other ABA term we can talk about in another video of delayed discounting.